Godot 4.2 is out now and the navigation agent has had a big upgrade so it's now got feature parity with the 3D version and you can bake the navigation mesh. In this tutorial I'm going to quickly show you how you can do the thing that you're seeing on the screen right now. So I've got a brand new blank empty project. All I'm going to do is create a top level 2D scene. I'm going to call this level 1 and then just add into that the brand new navigation region 2D. Next we'll add our tile map and we'll just make sure that the settings are correct before we input the tile set that we're going to use for this one. So I've used the Kenny Tiny Town and this one is a really cool tile set. It's actually 16 by 16 pixels. I'm just going to drag and drop this in. Um, this tile set has a one pixel separation. So I just set this up so that I can drag the tiles on nice and easily and they'll work perfectly. So I'm just going to select the tiles um, in this tile set that I would like to use. I'll just choose in a few of the concrete ones and a few of the grass ones. And the last thing you need to do is set up that physics layer. These are going to be the ones that are going to collide. So just go to paint, paint the physics layer and just paint the ones that you want to be solid. And when we paint them on, that will work as the barriers for our pathfinding. So this is just a really simple, quick um, map that I'm going to make. I'm using the tile map now and I'm just going to create a few um, barriers and a few of the background tiles and then we're going to see the magic happen just straight after this. So you'll see there's a warning under the navigation region 2D. This warning is telling us what we need to do. You need to create yourself a new navigation mesh resource, uh, a navigation mesh polygon and then all you need to do is click to draw around the whole tile map, press enter at the end and that will join it together. And then if you click bake navigation polygon, this whole navigation mesh will be baked. You can see it when I remove the tile map. What it's done is it's made the thing for us based on the collisions that you have within your tile map, which is absolutely awesome and in parity with the 3D. So let's add an agent that we can move around. So I'm going to add a top level object as an area 2D because why not? It'll detect the collisions for us. That area 2D I'm going to call enemy and we're just going to add some things to it. The first object that we need to add is going to be the Navigation Agent 2D. Navigation Agent 2D is going to do all the magic. We're also going to need some sort of sprite so we can see it, so we'll just add that too. And also we're going to make that sprite with the classic Godot sprite. And I'm going to make it a wee bit smaller too, just so that it's not huge on this tiny map. And lastly, as always, you just need to add some sort of collision shape for the Area 2D so it can detect its collisions. Right, let's write this script. So I'm just going to add a script to the enemy. It's OK to just call it enemy. And then we're just going to need to grab a reference to that navigation agent 2D child of the enemy. So I'm just going to do this up the top of my code here with the at on ready. So that happens on ready. And we're going to call it a nav. I'm going to force this type to be the navigation agent 2D. That'll give me some extra code completion a bit later on in the code. We also need to make sure that we assign it using the dollar sign and looking down into the child to find that navigation agent 2D. The next thing to do is very simply just to set the destination. I'm just going to jump back into 2D so I can work out what the coordinates are that I would like the object to go to just now so that we can get some testing happening real quick. So it's super easy, it's just simply one line of code with the navigation agent 2D, which we call the nav. We just use the target position and we set it to the value that we'd like. So right now we're going to hard code those values in. So we're just going to do vector 2 and I chose, because I checked with the 2D, that it was 790,210. So we'll just clean this up a little bit and we'll move on to the physics process. So in the physics process, we're going to have to, first of all, I've got a process right now. So I'm going to have to change that up to physics process. And in the documentation, it shows you that in that physics process, you need to try and find the next path position after every single frame. The way we're going to do this is we're just going to calculate a direction based on where we want to be minus where we current are, currently are. And then we'll just normalize that so it becomes a unit vector. And then we can just multiply it by speed times time, though that's the delta, in order to give us the velocity that we need to translate our object at. 
So we're going to test it out. I'm just real quickly going to add a camera to this um, Enemy 2D. So a camera 2D on top of that. Just that way the camera will automatically follow that enemy. And so when I test this, in theory, uh, it should just follow the path. And you can see it does. Um, unfortunately, it goes around the outside because I hadn't quite blocked that entirely off. But you see that it does work. So just testing again, um, you can move this anywhere you like and it should just work as expected. So I just moved it to the bottom and you'll see that it moves perfectly well along. But there's still some improvements that we can make. How about we introduce a click to move? So this is a lot easier than you think. All you really need to do is just override this uh, standard built-in input event. And if that event is an input event mouse button, you just set the new target position for the nav to be equal to the global mouse position and you can do that easily with the get global mouse position function. And now as you can see if you run this you can click anywhere you like on the map and the pathfinding will find the closest path to that location. Another quick fix is that jitter that you get at the end of the path. In order to fix this we just need to tell it to not keep trying to move to the path if you're already there. The way I solved this problem was I just made a, a variable called finished which I made equal to false and then we just make sure that if we're not finished um, we're going to do the actions for finding the next position and moving towards that next position and then all we really need to do is we hook into the event that comes with navigation agent 2d there's an event which is navigation finished which you can find in the node tab and all I'm going to do is hook up this navigation finished event into the uh, script that we already have, uh, this enemy script. If we connect this up, it's just single, one single line of code. So when this event fires, it just means that we set finished to be equal to true. So it doesn't continually try to move when it's already there. Now, don't forget that every time we collect, we also want to set the finished to be equal to false again. So when we do click a new location, we tell it we're not finished. And lastly, and only because it's really useful, if you click on the navigation agent, and go to the debug and unfold it and switch on debug so you enable debug then when you run this app um, you'll be able to click anywhere and you'll see the red line drawn for the nearest path or the best path to the location that you've clicked on this debug is really really useful if you're having problems and you don't know why the navigation isn't working so there you have it that's the new navigation system in godot 4.2 hopefully this is a nice fast tutorial and you'll be able to follow along please stick with it and don't forget to look in the documentation if you do get stuck there'll be more tutorials coming along soon